Winnipeg, you must be cold, my Canadian people. Canada, okay, so anyway, how is everybody? Um, how are you guys? How is everybody doing? How are you doing, you all? Is it a good evening? Yes, it's early for me because I have class tonight, so I'll be in school. That's what I'll be doing because I do this every day. I go here, there, and everywhere. So I'll be going there. I'm waiting for the chat. And uh, good uh, good afternoon. How are you guys? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Jana, right? Um, so, okay. So here's the thing. That's the cat opening the door. There she goes. See, she went right there. <laughs> you see the door open and people are always like, there's a ghost. And I'm like, it's my cat. She acts that way. Um, oh my God. Okay. Hi, Veronica. Yes, you guys. Oh my God. Okay. So y'all, here's what I figured out. I figured out <laughs> I'm doing a shout out to Carol. Carol, wherever you are, I'm shouting you out because, because of what she said. So to Carol, uh, I don't know what her handle is on here, but what she said, I'm shouting out Bobby, Bobby, to Bobby. Okay, so you guys, you guys, seriously, okay, seriously. So I wanted to, um, actually, before I do Eclipse stuff, I wanted to do, say something about, hi from London, I wanted to say um, about psychic readings, because I started to say it last night, but I was like kind of psycho, so anyway, when you're looking at psychics, here's what you need to understand, I feel, from my perspective, okay? So this is my perspective doing this work professionally since I'm 17, and so I'm 58, so that long. That's how many years I've been speaking to people daily, not, not just like publicly, just I used to read on in Toronto on the corner, uh, all the girls that went into the strip clubs, the prostitutes, that was my first clientele because I worked in the strip clubs and my first clientele reading were people in the strip clubs. I'm not talking about the men, I'm talking about the girls and the girls that sat at the bar, as you know, in Toronto, or maybe you don't, but Canadians in Toronto, you guys absolutely, okay, absolutely know that um, the hotels in Toronto have the, the rooms upstairs. So the working girls used to sit at the bar and the guys at the strip club looking at the strippers getting, you know, whatever. The ones, whatever, they would hire the, the girls, go upstairs for a couple of hours. So I used to read those girls and a lot of people that went to the racetrack and stuff like that. I used to trade readings back then for cigarettes and bleach. And I'm not joking. Like, Whatever I needed, if I needed my haircut, I would do a reading for the hairdresser. I have done that all the way up until my best hairdresser moved away <laughs> back to Beijing. And I can't stand it. Anyway, he moved away. I have wonderful hairdressers. But what I'm saying is I used to trade with Ryan all the time. So that's what I used to do uh, for readings. And then, <laughs> no, really, I did. If you could bleach my hair, oh my God, we're going to read about your boyfriend and we're going to... That's what we're going to do. But psychic ability, you're really born with it. Oh, she's at my mom was a stripper and an escort. How cute. Do you like your mom? I hope you like her. Um, yeah, I did that. That That's actually what I did. I mean, you know, if, if, if at times you can't do stuff. I was a kid. I was stripping. But there were times where, you know, I was paying a lot of people's bills back then, which is what strippers do. You know, I was taking care of men, of course, young men. And the one kid that was 12 that I ended up caretaking because his dad left him at a gas station and I kept passing him on the way to work because Toronto's like a subway place. Anyway, I kept passing him. I mean, subway and bus place. I kept passing him. And finally, I said, what are you doing here still? He was a young kid. And he was like, um, my stepdad dropped me here and he never came back. And I was like, what the fuck? Anyway, the stepdad just got rid of the kid. And I don't know. I don't know what happened to the mom. I don't know any of that. Anyway. Um, I took him in and he used to take care of my cat back then. Not this cat, another cat, <laughs> another cat. Um, and then we found kittens under the stairs anyway. And then when I moved to California, my neighbor took him in. Um, so that was really nice. The guy downstairs that was a photographer, I used to do his car, um, photo shoots, like, you know, girl in a bikini on the car. Anyway, that guy took him in. 
and I have no idea what happened to him. I was only 15 when I took him in. He was 12, I was 15. It's not like I was a grown ass person. But, um, oh, tell me, Elizabeth, tell me. I love to hear those dreams. So anyway, um, I started doing the work then. And you're kind of born with it. So you don't just come up. So when people say, I think it's fake or I think it's evil. Hi, Bobby. Um, when people say they think it's fake or they think it's evil, they maybe don't understand what it is or they're not educated enough or they come from a background that is like a different kind of background. But I haven't read the Bible fully. You know this. I say this all the time. But when you look at the Bible, it does say, so I've been told, that the three wise men followed the North Star on the advice of a prophet, okay? So what is a prophet? But a medieval term for psychic. The three wise men are like oracles and they followed the North Star. The North Star charting the stars is astrology. So it's right there in the Bible. And when they talk about things like necromancy and, you know, you're talking to the dead. Okay, because on earth, all of the... Um, what's the word for it? Man-made church conceptualizations of what religion is. So these are men that put up buildings and say, you have to go here to worship God. When you know, like, seriously, God's everywhere. You know that when you give birth to a child. You know that when you have a loved one that's passed away and they come through to you, you can feel them. You know that, okay? You absolutely know that. So when people say you are talking to the dead, the church on earth made of men, like Scientology has religious tax exemptions. I don't consider them a religion. The government does. We're talking about a government run organizations of churches, okay, of churches um, made by men. So you've met men out here on the planet earth. You see how vile the human race is and how stupid some of them are. Having said that, okay, when they teach about the dead, they teach that you die and you only go from here to heaven. That's not true. If you've had a near death experience, which I told you I have, and I've left my body and I, as a child, always left my body. I wasn't nearly dead. I just astral traveled. But what I'm saying to you is, we don't just go to heaven. Your relatives aren't dead. Their energy continues to live. So it's a specious argument when people say, okay, it's a specious argument when people say you're talking to the dead, it's a demon, it's evil. It can be. Not everybody that you, you know, there's different stages. That's correct. Not everybody that you talk to on the other side, thank you for that, is necessarily a good spirit or a bad spirit. I mean, I pray in the name of Jesus, amen, to get the information I need. That's what I do because I'm Christian. That's who I am. But I don't go to church. As I've told you that, I don't go to church. Um, and as a child, I always saw the dead. This was the conversation in my family. That was the problem that they had with me. And again, um, the problem is that they think you're crazy or they think whatever. It is a genetic predisposition. We cross through dimensions, okay? They are people who are crossed over out of your physical body. So what we're taught and what these people go online and say in order to blast you is kind of ridiculous because if I'm wrong, God forgives everybody. So I'll be, I absolutely, yes, AE, I absolutely fucking believe in hell. You cannot believe in, in, in the other realms that are higher and not believe in hell. We're in hell on earth. This is not a good place. This is not a, yes, there, Beth. Beth knows. Beth has a husband that's a working medium. She knows, okay? She knows. So I feel like it is just very odd that people go after religion because you're going to die one day. I'm going to die. You're going to die. If you're lucky, I want you to understand this. Hear me extremely clearly with this. My understanding of talking to the dead, when they use the word necromancy in reference to mediums getting information, that is an inaccurate depiction of it. Dead means to step away from God, okay? Dead means to step away from God. 
So any of your loved ones that have left their physical body, like my Keith, like my Jimmy, like anybody in your life, your parents, your children, your grandparents, whatever, whoever has passed, they have gone into a different dimension. They don't die. And you know that. If you've had a child die, you know your child comes to you because you can feel them. That's not a demon coming to you. That's none of that. That's that. That's ridiculous fear-mongering earth control over the masses with syrupy type religion or voodoo-y type religion or Scientology type religion. Go whichever way you want to whichever culture you want. Anybody who has had a child die, speaking to all of you people out there that have had children that have passed, you know your children come to you. They just can't physically touch you. They can touch. I mean, they can touch, but they can't physically like step into their body because the body died. It is a, a vessel for them, their energy to move. And you know that like if you have any spiritual discernment or awareness or half a brain cell in your head, you know that. Okay. You know that. You know that. So people online and people that do this, not only are they ignorant they have no spiritual awareness or spirit hasn't touched them, hasn't touched them in any way, shape or form. It's just unbelievable to me that, you know, I knew it as a kid. And again, I came into a family after a year of being, I'm, I was born and I was born into a baby brokering, I guess, <laughs> whatever, children's aid in Canada. And I spent the first year there. And then I was adopted, okay? There's lower energies, which are more like hell. There's definitely a hell. It's not the way it's described on TV, okay? Um, it's, not, it's not the way it's described on TV, but, you know, I was adopted into a family. And when I was adopted into that family, that family, my father's mother, that would be my grandmother through adoption or through the father that adopted me, she came to me. She died when he was a teenager or a young man. And I think this is hell on earth too. But I would tell him, and this was our argument. I can't have known it. I was adopted into some rando family. I didn't know who was who. I never met the woman. He never spoke about it. I, and we weren't allowed religion in our house whatsoever. My father was like, absolutely no religion whatsoever. <laughs> um, you know, like we're not going to church. We're not doing that shit. That's how I was raised with an agnostic, semi hedging his bets, atheist. So I don't have religious quackery going on in my head, okay? I really don't have that. So when people speak to me about it's fake and it's phony, there have been seers all throughout time. Who do you think Nostradamus is? Who is Nostradamus? I mean, who is he if he's not that? They're not 100% right. They're not 100% right. Who was Edgar Casey? These are people that do this. They're not evil. Their body is just allowing them to pick that information up. That's it. Their body allows them that. Like I go to class and somebody's double jointed. You know who you are if you're watching this. Anyway, she's double jointed. I can't do that. That's something I can't. I literally cannot stretch in some of these classes. Like I'm, it's a joke. Like I go four times a week to stretch. Can't do it, okay? Cannot do it. She can do it like that. No problem, never a problem. There are timeline changes, okay? There are timeline changes. The timeline changes, timeline, you have to understand, they do clocks and times and like 24 hours in a day to keep you rudimented, okay, rudimentary on a lower vibration. Drugs, alcohol, Weed, vaping, anything with a substance is designed to pull your energy down, okay? So every time people find things out, now understand the people that rule this planet, because we're all enslaved here except for a few, and I don't know who the group is and I don't know how people find them, but it should be obvious to you when one person runs um, the uh, stocks and bonds in this country and decides when they're going up and when they're going down and when to crash it, I mean... That should tell you that we're like, we are gambling addiction as well. Any kind of addiction is a low vibration, okay? Any kind of addiction is a low vibration. Weed, if you, okay, all right. I know you've heard your body is the temple, right? I know you've heard that. 
women and men like to look good. They like to feel good. That's why you buy pretty clothes or you put them on for a date or you go to Christmas dinner and you wear like a really nice sweater, whatever it is. That's how you're supposed to respect your body. You are supposed to respect it. It doesn't mean that you can't like indulge in su sex addiction is one of the worst addictions. You're letting people into your vessel, your vessel. So people get really angry when you pray, when you speak to Jesus, okay? They get really angry. They get so angry about it. When you look good and you keep your body good and you don't Botox and you don't drink and you don't do drugs, they get very mad at you, okay? They hate you for it. Because they're fake in the way that they approach things. There's a lot of trickery going on with the way people look. Their body is a vessel, okay? Your body. So you are not supposed to overindulge in fucking, drinking, crack pipe smoking, cigarette smoking, sugar eating, I don't know, whatever. Obviously, moderation would be the key to that. But if you, thank you for that. But if you have to tune out of your God-given body every single day because you can't live in it, what is wrong with you? So you have to, great, sober, fantastic, fantastic. That's just, the, you know, that's just the way it is. I'm sorry if people don't want to see it. So I feel like there's so many different things. Your body is precious to you. When you get to be my age, I'm almost 60. I love saying that. That's the truth. And no, I don't have Botox. Look. Mm. And these are my teeth. You can tell. I have like cavities back here. True, true story. 500 days sober. Whoop, whoop. Um, but anyway, when you're my age, you only have one thing. And that's your physical body. If you don't use your physical body properly and you mar it down, you have breathing problems, you have diabetes problems, you have whatever your problems are, you have to literally shift your thinking into the protection of your vessel so you can complete what you have to do here. It really has to do with that. So when you look at it, understand the more you take care of yourself, people will mock you and they will hate you. I still wear retainers at night. They will mock you and they will hate you, okay? The more that you don't drink, they want to hurt you because they have a weakness and their weakness holds them to a lower vibration. And that lower vibration keeps them stuck in a timeline of thought. And that timeline of thought is very problematic, which is why they alter the timelines with frequencies because every time some of us grasp on to a new way of thinking, whatever it is, like... Um, for example, if you want to look at health stuff, the food pyramid is always problematic. The way they said eat six or eight servings of grains a day. If you do that, you'll have diabetes and you'll be fat as fuck, okay? <laughs> like, you cannot eat that many. Like, no, you cannot do that. You just cannot do that. Um, if you're, you know, if you're doing stuff where you're letting people put their body fluid in your body and they have ill thinking or they've collected, look at your body... Your orgasms carry with it your intellectual intent, your mindset, your physicality, and every other person that you've slept with, their intention, mindset, and personality. So when a guy or a girl does that, I mean, a girl's energy doesn't go into the man's body, I don't think. Not the same way a guy does a woman because obviously we get pregnant, so the it's in our bodies. But you really have to watch whether you're male or female because those person's energy, so look at it in terms of STDs or STIs or just crabs back in the day. Do you want somebody with energetic crabs doing that in your body? Do you want that? I do not. So people that think like that, they begin to think, worse about themselves and then they are the problem on the planet because they are so vile in their expressions that they try to lower everybody's expressions. So yay Leos. So it's a real problem. She said new Leo follower. I'm like yay Leos. I have a pack of Leo girlfriends and one Sagittarius and we all and we got another Leo coming on the group. We all go out together. So it's like a bunch of Leos and one Sag, but it's basically fire sign girlies. So you have to understand people are going to hate on you. And so when they hate on you because you treat yourself properly, that's a problem. That's an energetic 
problem for them. Showing their vibration is very low. And when it's low like that, their ignorance shows through. So you have to watch that um, because you need to elevate. So when people talk about hell, right? When people talk about hell, they're talking about the levels of vibration dimensionally that keep you trapped in addictive thinking, in vengeful thinking, in anger thinking, in horrible thinking, okay? Earth is full of that, but go down a couple of rungs and that would be what I would call hell. So people that rape and murder and pillage and are vile and use their platforms for vile conversations or murders or whatever, that's what I'm talking about. That's a lower vibration and they don't understand spiritual anything. They do. I love little, my Jason's a cancer. Uh, June 18th, aw, cute little Gemini's. Gemini's, there's lots of Gemini's here and Aries, the Aries, um, yeah, they're energy vampires. And what they want to stop you from doing, I, you know what I realized? So as soon as this P, and I'm gonna talk about the eclipse right now, I'm gonna start because I have a class, so I'm gonna go quick. But anyway, you know what I realized that I didn't realize, that I did realize, that, you know, while I'm reading people for 40 years, right, and I'm doing these videos on here, my whole life is out there publicly, and it's fine. Like there, I have no secrets. That's why you can't blackmail me. I don't have any secrets. My son died when I was starting this channel. I mean, not starting it. Uh, we started at the end of 2018. He started it with me. And I know somebody asked, I did get an email from a rando, but a random person, that's what I call a rando. But they asked me, you know, why do you only read celebrities? And I wanted to point that out. I read a lot of celebrities in real life by proximity to where I live. So while I was raising my boys, my house was full of people, people who work in production, people who send their clients, the actors, the musicians, people that run the studios and all of their family members. That is California. Okay. That is Hollywood. I can't help that. That is where I am. Okay. If I lived in the Midwest, I guess I would have a lot of a different clientele and as you know, the studio. So once you get introduced into the studios, you end up with people that are on all these shows. You have production people, you have their mothers, their fathers. I've had clients since the streets of Toronto though. So I have had a tremendous amount of people that have followed me my whole life. But the reason I read on celebrities is if I was gonna read, um, do a reading astrologically on your neighbor, Karen, Nobody's tuning in for that because nobody knows who Karen is and they might tune in for the astrological aspect of it, but they don't know who she is. So it's not going to work in a public platform, obviously. So anyway, when I started this channel, I'm just answering to this person that emailed me because they seem like they were actually asking the question. So when I started this channel, I had 60 people on it. I mean, I had this channel since like 2008. Didn't know what to do with YouTube. Just had one and then just left it. So I did a reading for somebody that knew Chris Cornell, okay? So a bandmate, we'll just put it like that. They called me and they said, did he really do what they say he did? So I, of course, never looked into it because I don't give a shit. When something happens, I don't go, oh my God, let me figure this out. I do if it hits me to do it, okay? There was a little girl out in Lost Hills. I think it was Lost Hills. She was found by the, um, what do you call those people? The sheriff's station out there. I immediately clicked into her energy when she went missing. And I knew, I knew that she had passed away. Lost Hills. And I can't think of the little girl's name, but it was years ago. I remember I had really, really bad hair at that time when that happened. Anyway, John and I were eating dinner and I, I he mentioned it and I immediately, we drove out there because I'm like, this chick is dead. Like I felt it very strongly. Anyway, um, so I read for this person who knew Chris Cornell. I have personal friends in the entertainment industry. Again, I live in Los Angeles. It's kind of like normal, all right? I have been on camera myself. I wasn't trying to get into movies. I don't want to be a movie actress. I don't, and just to clear that up, I don't want to read anybody's script. I like to speak my own words so that I can control my language the way that I choose to control it. So I'm not going to be a character. I don't care to step into a character. I am who I am, and that's why I never got hired as an actress. However, as I said, I met a guy in traffic school when I was pregnant with Jason and the teacher introduced him to me and he was running a show called The Other Side, producer. He needed a psychic 
He grabbed me. He was probably on a time crunch and I probably wasn't his first choice. I ended up working solid for two years. I had Keithy, I mean, I had Jason, and then I was pregnant with Keithy, and then the show closed down. I have been in entertainment. I don't think I said anything about that, okay? I don't think I said anything the fuck about that. But my point is, when Chris Cornell passed, somebody asked me who knew him what happened. And I had said, of course, you know, whatever I felt. But the second person that worked with him that asked me for a reading, I got a very different read on it. So I said, oh my God, I got this read. I was telling Keith and he's like, why don't you do a video? I go, well, I don't really want to do a video. I was doing crystal videos and astrology videos. Another thing I'm going to say, tarot card reading is one thing and anybody can pick up a tarot card book, read the book and then throw the cards and get impressions. It's like a paint by number. It doesn't mean you're an artist. It doesn't mean you're a psychic. It doesn't not mean you're a psychic, okay? Astrology is a lifelong pursuit educationally wise, and it's a technically designed way of reading, and it's a totally different thing. I've been doing that over 40 years. So it's not like I'm coming out here going, you know, woo-woo stuff. This has been my life's work. I stand behind my life's work. That's what I stand behind. Okay, so anyway, getting back to Chris Cornell. So he says, why don't you do a video on that? Okay, and so I was reading the comments and these people were like fucking harassing me. And he said to me, don't worry about what they say. And then Keith looks at me like this. It's the end of, just like November 2018. He goes, don't worry what they say in the comments. Do you think fucking Kobe worries about that? Kobe does not care as he's laughing to the bank what these bitches say online. And then I always thought of that. And Carol reminded me of that tonight. So thank you, Carol, for picking up on Keith's words and telling me that. So Keith told me that. He goes, don't fucking laugh. Buy a new house, he said, my little boy. We still live in, I mean, my family still lives in his childhood home. But anyway, we haven't done that because we just live day to day. But Keith said that. He goes, don't read those comments. Don't care. Don't care. They're going to call you all kinds of bullshit like they call Kobe. Kobe laughs his ass and puts another diamond ring on his wife's finger, takes his kid to summer camp and says, Fuck you. So that's what Keithy said. Then Chester Bennington came through and Chester really did come through super strong and his family members did reach out and I don't know if I ever got back to them or not. Most of my clientele I have had for years. Like I absolutely have had regular clients over and over and over. You're not going to be right with everybody. Nobody does anything right or wrong. It's just what you pick up. Sometimes you don't have a connection. Sometimes you do. That's the way it is. Um, you know, yeah, Montel Williams. That's because I read the producers on that show. That's how I got on that show. I'm not, I wasn't trying to get on it. They look for psychics and they put people out there. My problem was I'm not controllable. So I wouldn't you know, sign a contract the way they wanted to, me too, which was in perpetuity to a lot of things. I wasn't going to do that, right? Yeah, I'm okay with or Oracle and Tarot. I know how to read them. I learned how to read tarot cards when I worked at a bookstore when we moved out of town and I had clients back in Burbank and I had to go back. So I needed a bookstore to go back to, to listen, I mean, to do my readings. So all the girls use tarot. I'm a non-tools psychic, okay? I get what I get, just like my kids did. Keith was psychic, Jason was psychic. It's a genetic thing. You have a genetic opening to you. And maybe you're supposed to heal and do the work for other people. Maybe that's what you're supposed to do. Like, you know, I mean, maybe, you know, if you're a makeup artist, you're supposed to make people feel good. Maybe as a psychic, you're supposed to help them heal their childhood family patterning. My background, and again, I was born into, it was a house where they kept babies that were put up for adoption and didn't get adopted, okay? So I did not get adopted, okay? So white privilege did not work for me in that angle. <laughs> I spent a year. The other babies left, I spent a year in, in this place. I don't even know what it was. I'll say orphanage, but I don't think it was that. So when I did get adopted, right, when I did get adopted, the family was you know, whatever. And because of the way that I was and them not having an acumen to the way my energy worked, 
I was a ward of the court again by the time I was 12, and I left my adopted home by the time two months after I turned 14 and went into the sex industry, just so we're very fucking clear on everything. I have no problem saying that. That is what my life is. So I was very familiar with trafficked kids, sexually abused kids. I almost got trafficked at 20 out of Miami. I escaped in a slip and bare feet, and a client from a club in... in um, Fort Lauderdale came and got me. I got to a pay phone. They didn't even have cell phones. They had pay phones. I hid until dark and called because I was in a bright yellow with a pink flower on it. Um, whatever you call it, like slip, a teddy thing, slip, whatever it was. No shoes, no purse, no ID, no nothing. So when I say that, I met many a person. And a lot of my TV work back when I was pregnant with both Jason and Keith, and Jason came with me to the shelters. And I was allowed to work at the shelters with my children because I wouldn't leave my children. I brought my children. But a lot of the people I worked with, um, you know, doing readings for, these were transgendered kids that have been thrown out of their homes, kids that lived in flop houses. I did a lot of TV where I went to the flop houses. Kids would go missing because people of money would come and pick them up. That's just my life. Like, if you... Like, if people want to say whatever they want to say, camisole, thank you, I was, you know, whatever that was. But it hasn't been easy, and white privilege wasn't really working, other than I look like my biological mother, and I can't help that. Ashley, Ashley totally gets this, because she too is a white woman and comes from a certain amount of non-white privilege. Ashley knows what I'm talking about. She's actually lived the similar life in a different way. So... The work that she does and the work that I do, I come at it. We, my children, just, I have to say this, it's so long-winded and I apologize, but my children were raised and my husband, who I was married to for 36 years, my husband, and we still see each other every day, obviously, because we have grandkids, so that's what we do, but my husband allowed his house to be used for people to come and sit at our kitchen table every morning to get readings. That is what I did. My kids woke up. I told you Keith would scale out the back window and fly down on a bed sheet because he did not Thanks, Ashley. Because he did not want to walk past the clients in the kitchen, okay? Um, yeah, 28 years is a long time. Um, 36 years is a long time. Um, yeah, I can't help my skin color. I love it when people do the reverse racist thing. It's like, if it's not good for you to be your color and people to comment it, why do you feel the need to comment on my skin color that I can't change? I literally can't change what I look like and neither can you. You can't and I can't. So I, I don't know what to say to that. Like intellectually, that's very like uneducated thinking. I think it's uneducated thinking, right? But um, anyway, you know, Keith and Jason grew up. There you go, 25 years, Beth. Keith and Jason grew up with every person. I had people that were schizophrenic that would call me up that were not celebrity. I had people's parents, grandparents, kids, friends of friends. Um, you know, I did one-on-one -on -one in person readings for over 30 something years until COVID. And I didn't stop it because of COVID. I moved to a different location and didn't really want anyone knowing it. So that's like the whole scope. So when people say like, you're fake. I have put my life on, like, this has been my life. And you don't actually make a lot of money because you're one person. You can only work and do so many readings with your energy. And I'm not about to stop hiking. I'm not about to stop, you know, going out to lunch with my friends. And I'm definitely not going to stop going to the hairdresser or see my granddaughter or take my aerial classes. Like my life I prefer exercise in my life. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not going to be working around the clock. I work seven days as it is, okay? <laughs> she can't see me. Ashley, I see you. Um, I don't know who you mean can't see you. But anyway, it, oh, she can't see you. I get it. Yeah, right. <laughs> if I had my phone, I'd show them a picture of you, Ashley. So that's like, I'm just answering questions that people emailed me. When it comes to P. Diddy, the only reason I read Kim Porter, because that's not my genre of music. As you know, I'm an Aussie fan and an Aussie musician and a Zach fan. And that's the music I go heavy metal, right? Like in, in rock and roll and I'm 70s and 60s. Like I'm not listening to P. Diddy. I don't care. 
Um, nothing about P. Diddy has intrigued me except I knew from the moment that Mary J. Blythe, back in the day, back in the 90s, somewhere back there. I love Prince. Oh my God, I love Prince. Yes, I love Prince. He's not rock and roll heavy metal, but he's fantastic. Whatever you call his music, I love it. Um, but especially the Sinead O'Connor song, I really love it. But when you're looking at it, when Mary J. Blythe said that she had records on the radio and not two cents to rub together and p diddy was her manager i knew that he owned her at that time and i didn't like it okay so i didn't like it um i didn't like him when j-lo lied for him carry a gun in carry a gun out i don't like you i think that you're causing chaos so I wasn't going to do the reading on him or not do the reading on him. People asked me to do Kim Porter. They were more concerned about what happened to Kim Porter. And I thought that that's a very valid question. So that valid question is when I did that reading. And nobody fed me anything. I mean, if you think like, how the hell are... You just get what you get psychically. Like, how are you going to know when the feds are going to raid them? And if the feds are going to raid them... Why are they going to tell me that? Um, so it's kind of interesting. But anyway, uh, yeah, I just got what I got. And I start off with the astrology chart. That's what I like. And if I get the correct stuff, and I think I even got the wrong place of birth for her. Um, but I get it. And then the impressions come to me. That's how it works for me. I hear things. I do things. I never know if I'm going to be right. <laughs> I have no clue. Sometimes I'm way off the mark. It's like, what the fuck did she say? She's way off the mark. So that's just the way it is. Nobody's 100% right. Nobody's 100% wrong. That's it. That's just the way it is. I don't know what to tell people. If you don't believe it, you're perfectly fine. Now let's get into the eclipse. I've had enough. Thank you so much for listening. Okay, eclipse, y'all. So I had to write it down because of the degrees and I can't remember. All right, so first of all, we have a total solar eclipse on April 8th, okay? So we have it on April 8th. Aw, oh, little boxer dog. Yeah, that's cute. I'm not afraid of you. <laughs> and and by the way, oh, thank you. Now I got to digress again into this rant. So when my son died, um, I lost all feeling in my body, okay? So no feeling in my body. When Jimmy died, I had a nervous breakdown. I did tell my stepson. I asked him how he wanted me to bury him because I was told he was going to pass. That is one of my psychic gifts Everybody in our family knows it and my group of friends know it because they have seen it in live time. I begged Keith and Jason to be careful. Both of them, I didn't know which one it was. I took care of my son and it was an honor when he died to take care of him. We were devastated. Um, when he died, I knew it was coming and I knew it was coming by September. But the reason I say that he was run off the road is I had been receiving death threats for doing Nipsey Hussle video and on and on. And I'd been being stalked when I was hiking. So I had several people who approached me and they all had boxer dogs. That was how I know them now. They approach me and they show up with boxer dogs. It sounds really weird, but I was way, way up like Mount Wilson, almost close to the top, but on a trail where nobody was. And this guy followed me and, and was, you know, acting like he was a normal hiker with his dog. And then he said, you should keep quiet. And I said, excuse me. And he goes, you should keep quiet. And he pulled the tattoo up and it was Nipsey Hussle here. So what happens with that is people are programmed through the beast system and they react. You remember, people have been on this channel where I'm not making it up. I'm sorry it sounds crazy. I don't know what to say. I'm sorry it sounds fucking crazy, but that's what happened. I was also on the news for living Anna Nicole's death experience before she died. So I was also interviewed for that because that's actually what happened to me. I lived her death experience but didn't understand that it was hers. And when she died, it was the whole thing I'd been living. So that was a body response. I can't help the way I am. And I am protected in the name of Jesus, amen, because it's Easter weekend. Also a big sacrificing. Both sides of the system come in and they fight each other. But that's the way that it, that's just, it's not about being brave, I'm authentic. So this year is about being authentic. I'm just who I am. I can't help it. This is really how I look. 
I really do what I do, and I've done this work day in and day out. My kids know it. The neighbors know it. My in-laws know it. Everybody knows it. So um, it's just the way it is. And I'm sorry if it offends you or if my whiteness offends you or if my beautiful son offends you uh, or my stepson offends you. You know, my stepson used to cook me dinner every night after I had my kids so that I could go exercise and lose the weight. He helped his dad plan every party. He was a great kid. I loved him tremendously. He was my friend. I married his father and he used to tell me to calm down. I was so jealous of John back then. And Jimmy was, <laughs> would laugh at me and tell me to calm my ass down. He would just, I would call him, I'm like, your dad. And he would be like, calm the hell down. <laughs> and he would laugh. Double Sag, okay, Double Sag, Pisces Moon. Pisces Moon. He would just laugh his ass off going, going like, oh my God, she's a crazy little, <laughs> crazy little girl. I love Jimmy. It broke my heart when he died. It broke my heart. I, I just about collapsed. I had a new baby. I had Keith with me. Keith took his steps, his first steps on the day his brother died. We have a, a picture of John and I at the park and Keith, he's standing, taking his first steps and his brother died, okay? And it was devastating. Our whole life blew up. I wasn't able to go outside or eat solid food for like 13 years. I had to push my clients away then. I could not function. So this is not something I did to be famous. If I wanted to be famous, literally, I would have done this, whatever they're just saying I'd done when I was a little kid. I did nothing. I did nothing but want to get married and have my kids. And my Keith was my greatest my greatest love besides my Jason and Jimmy, but I didn't birth Jimmy. He came to the family I married into. I mean, he came with them. Um, but Keith was such a love. And as I told you, six months before he died, the voice told me to ask him for forgiveness for being a psycho mom when he was a teenager. And I chased him all around and, <laughs> and try to punch him. And he would, his big six, four, six foot four hands would grab me like this and he'd keep, and I'd be swinging like this, you know, when the police would come to the door, I'd go crazy, crazy. I love that boy with all my heart. And there's no amount of money or anything. This is not fame, what's happening with the P. Diddy thing. It's just that some psychic said something and we have social media. And so people recognize it because it flies around the internet. That's not fame. That's this much. And I've always been in the public eye, so it doesn't even make sense. So I'm answering that. Anyway, no, people have asked me, so I'm like doing that. But I honor my sons, both both of my sons and my grandkids, and that's what I'm here to do. So that's it. I did ask Keith for forgiveness. And you know what he said? He gave me a big hug and he said, I love you. You were a good mom. This is me. I told you. I'm just telling one more story. So Keithy would go to this friend's house and the friends would do drugs all night because the parents did drugs with the kids. I found this out because one of the parents asked me if I wanted to do cocaine when I picked my son up. He was 14. No, I don't want to do cocaine. I'm picking my child up. He's 14. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. So I just was like, what, what is going on? So I didn't want to stop Keith from being friends with this kid because I love this kid. So <laughs> I would tell Keith, I'd be like, you can spend the night there, but I'm going to pick you up at 637 in the morning <laughs> because I have to work and your dad needs the car. This is what I would say. Your dad needs my car, right? <laughs> this is exactly what I would say. And he'd look at me like, can you pick me up at noon? The reason I wouldn't pick him up at noon when I could have is because they have all that time to get sober, right? And I wanted to teach him that I was on his ass. I wasn't going to have him overdose like his big brother did. That was not something I was going to do. Like I was going to teach him, like you're going to be on guard with me because I'm not going to make it easy for you to go out there and have something happen to you, even though they get away with a lot, kids, right? You know how they do. They do all kinds of shit behind our back that I'm still finding out about. <laughs> but anyway, um, I would pick him up at 6.37 in the morning and it was pretty funny. Anyway, that was the whole thing. So Keith told me, and he told me when he was 17, he said, I know what you were doing. I said, good. <laughs> That's what I said. I had all these things to try to do. <laughs> all these things I tried to do. You know, so anyway, my children were the only reason I was born, me and my white privilege and all was the only reason I was born was to have those children. And that's it. I didn't really expect anything. This kind of fell into it for me. So 
that was it. I just loved my children. That's all I can tell you. And I love my grandkids and that's it. Yeah, I'm not saying anything. That's exactly right. So now on to the eclipse. So I'm going to say we have a total solar eclipse. Thank you for listening. We have a total solar eclipse. New moon in Aries, second decadent, which puts a Leo twist on it, okay? So it puts a Leo twist on the energy. That immediately draws my mind to the monarchy or the royalty, not just in England, but all over the world with this eclipse, okay? Because it's double fire sign. Each sign is broken down into three groups by degree. First 10 degrees, second 10 degrees, third degrees, decans, okay? Decanence. So this one has a Leo flavor to it. So when we look at the energy of this Aries eclipse, it puts bravado on it. It puts royalty on it. It puts the monarchy on it. So look for monarchy things in all countries, everywhere, okay? So it's the 8th of, uh, the 8th of April. So when you look at it, now it's squaring Sirius and it is also an extremely independent because it's in Aries. Understand in your chart, Anywhere that Aries is placed, okay, anyway, anywhere that Aries is placed, that is an independent sign. So Aries, anywhere in your chart, does not matter where it's placed. That's where you show your independence. Aries is always, okay, Aries is always starting a new life cycle. So and Aries rising, Aries moon. Aries Sun. Aries Sun is a new life cycle away from the father's control of the patterning. Aries Moon, the mother's control of the patterning. Aries Rising, the self. Okay. Happy birthday to your son, 30, right around Jason's age. Jason will be 32 this year. Unbelievable. So when the sun, okay, when the sun is in Aries and you have the moon in Aries, that is exceptionally independent. So what we're talking about is this energy during this eclipse wants you to be more self-sufficient, more self-reliant. Now we are also, well, Venus and Aries, Venus is love, Aries is a new cycle in love, and Venus and Aries mean independent love affair, looking for a strong, dominant, traditional, Aries is always traditional, independent woman to love, or it's how you express yourself if you're the woman, okay? So when you're looking at it, we have, okay, I had to write down, we have Mercury retrograde on April Fool's Day. <laughs> That's what we're having is a retrograde spirit right now. So we have Mercury retrograde on April Fool's Day. It is at 27 degrees and 13 seconds. So when Mercury goes retrograde, and again, Everybody and their cousin who thinks they're an astrologer, I can't believe they wrote that article in Newsweek about me and they used the word astrologist. You know, my mind almost popped off its, my, my head almost popped off its, um, off my shoulders, right? <laughs> I went astrologist, my eyes are going like this. I was sure they were trolling me. Anyhow, because um, astrologist is not what a real astrologer is called. <laughs> Male or female, you're an astrologer. Astrologist is nonsense. Don't use that word anymore. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, I'm in Newsweek. Oh my God, they called me an astrologist. I was fucking dying laughing. That is hilarious. Anyway, the retrograde starts at 27 degrees and 13 seconds of Aries. And then it goes back to 16 degrees and then it goes back up. So I want you to understand that a retrograde brings hidden insight to the forefront. So when everybody's freaking out, oh my God, it's Mercury retrograde. It's because things do go backwards because it is a spiritual point in the chart. Any planet going backwards, okay, so it kind of suspends motion and it retards backwards. That's how they word it, okay? So it kind of goes backwards. So they think that that's bad, but what it is is it's going back over the degrees and the beliefs of things that basically you haven't dealt with. It gives you insight into things that you haven't dealt with, okay? So those types of circumstances during a retrograde will be highlighted by where it's placed in your chart and the sign that it's in. It's definitely in Aries, okay? So all of the things in your Aries house, no, don't let the planets scare you. The planets are like your, okay, 
if you're a woman, right, or a man, whichever, but let's just say a woman. So all of us women all over the world, we have eyes, we have nose, we have mouth, we have boobs, we have vaginas, and we have a womb. That is the definition of a woman. We are able to bear children. So the way that our eyes look, the way that our mouth looks, our skin color, our hair color, our eye color, the way that our lips are shaped, the you know our boob size, our womb size, our thigh size is all different. But in order to make up the whole chart of a woman is all of these things combined. That is what your chart is. It is the combination and essence of your energy combined. Got it? Do you see what I mean? It's the energy of that. That's what it is. So when you look at it, you're looking at an entire combination of energy. So like you can't just be a woman because you have eyes. Like you got to look at the whole woman and you can say she's a tall woman with an angular body and brown hair and olive skin and green eyes or she's a short, curvy, blonde, short-haired woman or she's a fiery redhead. That's how you describe it. It's in combination. It's not just one thing. So it's a it's like cooking. You can't get a cake by just putting flour in a bowl. It's got to have a whole bunch of stuff, right? So Aries is extremely independent and it is a cardinal sign and it is a fire sign and it is ruled by the father as are all the fire signs. So Aries, Leo and Sag are all ruled by the father. Now, meaning the energy is directed towards masculine expression. Doesn't matter what your body is in. It's just the energy of that is action oriented fire sign. Aries is cardinal. Aries is what I call, um, what do I call Aries? I always say they're like, um, what was that show? My friend worked on this show. Oh my God, Mad Men, <laughs> advertising men. You know, they all go, or a writer's room, they all go into a room and it's like, let's come up with an idea. That is Aries. Aries is your idea, man or woman, and they will do it. They need another fire sign to complete it. Do you see what I'm saying? So this is, it. this New moon in Aries, total solar eclipse is basically about breaking away from the confines and the restrictions, okay, of other things. So don't look at the comments. Listen to what I'm saying. Don't let them win. Just laugh at the information you're getting. Take the information. I'm giving you information. I'm like literally giving you information. Pay attention and take the information. Don't let... um don't let the uh, trolls win because they're really fans. You know, they really like me. They like me and my blonde hair and my big boobies and my lips. They love me. That's who they are. They're fans. So say hi to the fans that are spamming and the trolls and get the information astrologically. So during this full moon, I mean, new moon, solar eclipse in Aries, okay, you want to look to see the 19 degrees in your chart of Aries. So let me just say from a flat wheel or a natural wheel where it's coming. So obviously the eclipse hits Aries on themselves because it's about Aries, okay? It hits them on themselves. It hits the first house. And obviously for Libra, it's gonna hit you in the seventh house because remember, every sign has its opposition. Aries, Libra, across. It's six months across the calendar. That's basically what it is. The aspect is called an opposition. So an Aries person has to learn to integrate with the balance of a Libra, and a Libra has to step away from the public and become self-focused. That's why the energy goes like this back and forth, okay? So that's how that works. So we have Pisces on the second house, okay? This is the eclipse wheel. We have Pisces on the second house. So for Pisces, it's going to affect you on a financial level or on a belief system level. So like what, what is your foundational belief system? That's like a Pisces thing that's going, like what are you willing to put up with? What are you not willing to put up with? What are you going to do? What are you not going to do? So that's a Pisces aspect, okay? Second house is Pisces. Third house is Aquarius. So Aquarius, you people during this eclipse, okay, all you Aquarius sun, moon, and rising people, but mainly Aquarius sun, you are going to go back into the past to your childhood neighborhoods and discover what was not fixed from back then. So this is about freeing yourself from thought patterns or belief systems about yourself, 
your siblings and what happened in the past. Like what happened in the past in your life, okay? I'm talking about the eclipse wheel, when the eclipse happens, okay? Well, you don't have to go back to your neighborhood, but there will be issues that come up around your siblings from your past with Aquarius on the third. Capricorn, you're on the parental axis of the fourth. You're usually on the 10th. Capricorn is usually the 10th. Le um, Cancer is usually the fourth, but it's flipped during the eclipse, okay? So what's happening for Capricorn is there is, um, I love Taurus. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I love Taurus. I just don't like my Taurus mother or people with a high lot of Taurus trying to tell me to set plans. Planning makes me crazy. I don't have an ounce of that in me, so it makes me nuts. Um, anyway, we have Capricorn in the fourth. So for all the Capricorn people, there's a, a focus of going back in time towards the mother figure, the childhood home, and the messages that were telegraphed to you from early childhood. This eclipse is going to free you from that. Remember, this is a freeing eclipse. This is eclipse that frees people from what mentally keeps them stuck in their head, okay? So there's a freeing element to it. So the fifth house is Sagittarius's. Of course it is. Sagittarius's, you all are going to be out having fun with your kids, your gambling, your love life, your sex life. This eclipse is bringing about, now listen to this Sagittarius's, the eclipse is bringing about the ability to step away from things that have held you back because you are connected to them because you have a love affair with somebody who believes in that way of thinking. So Sagittarius is, is going to be able to discern between their thoughts and their lover's thoughts. That's what's going to happen, okay? For Sag. Scorpio, sixth house. Work shit for Scorpio, okay? So work shit, health shit. During this eclipse, understand I'm speaking only the eclipse. So when you look at eclipse, you've got the six months prior and the six months after. So... With this particular new moon in Aries, it's going to go fundamentally for another six months. So you're starting your new projects, your new stuff, because this is the new year right now, not January 1st, where they make us. This is what they do with the timelines. They're like, we're going to put it here in the dead of winter. This is going to be your new year. <laughs> it's not. It's right now. We just We just hit the new year right now. Aries is the new year. It's always the beginning of a cycle. That is the way it is. So the seventh house, like I said, oh, sorry, Scorpio in the sixth house, your health, your reproductive um, health, because it's Scorpio, reproductive, your health, and your basic like day-to-day -day what you do for work. So do you get up? Do you work nine hours a day? Do you do this? What is it you do? So for, Air, for Scorpio, that's how this eclipse is affecting you, okay? So like how do you take care of self? How do you work daily on yourself? And how do you work on your work daily? So that's Scorpio. So Libra is in the seventh house where it belongs natally. So the same thing, balancing, I hate Scorpios. That's a lot of people's opinions. Um, but Libra is in the seventh house and Libra is always out of balance. And Aries is bringing a new cycle of balance to your relationships, not just sexual, not just husband and wives, but it's bringing a lot of um circumstances, I guess, to your experience with the people that you have communications with, okay? So Libra, it's a pretty normal feeling for you during this eclipse. The eighth house is Virgo. Well, you know what I call Virgo, the most psychic sign, number one. The second thing is Virgo the virgin, Virgo the whore. Don't get mad at me, Virgos. You know you dress like a virgin, but you naughty when you take those clothes off. I'm being serious. I am being so serious. Um, it is a sign of the prostitute. People don't like to, say, <laughs> to hear that. I'm not saying y'all are prostitutes. It's just when you see Virgo and how clean and how productive it is, it can compartmentalize the sex act. When it's in the eighth house, Virgo is going to focus on regeneration of their body energy, their spiritual energy, their sexual energy, and their material energy, money, eighth house. So this eclipse is opening channels for Virgo to make different kind of money. Ninth house is Leo. My people, my people, 
Leo people, and I'm a triple Leo with a loaded 12th house. So everything's in the house of Pisces for me, except for my Virgo, the whore that I am in the first house, okay? That's what I call myself because people make fun of psychics all the time. I used to do this when John and I would go out. He'd go, this is my wife. And I'd go, and they'd ask what you do. I'd go, hi, I'm a prostitute. <laughs> That's what I would do. That way you're not gonna mock me about being psychic. I will just be a hoe right off the bat. That's the Virgo in me. First house shit in Virgo. Leo rising, but first house shit. Pluto in Virgo. I don't mince words. Anyway, uh, Leo in the ninth house. This is interesting. Leo's new ways of traveling, new ways of moving about in your neighborhood, in the planet, and new educational things coming through for Leo. Ninth house, all things Sagittarius for Leo's. Philanthropy, higher-minded studies, so like university studies, different ways of thinking. Oh, cute, a little seven-month-old Leo, so cute. Um, yeah, people hate Leos. I'm a Leo moon too. They hate us. I can't help it. <laughs> One of the girls at fire camp, she said she was a Leo and she had this massive long hair and I had short hair. She goes, look, you're a girl Leo and I'm a boy Leo. You know, the men have the line, the the long hair and the girls have the short hair. And I'm like, you are right. <laughs> um, people hate us so much. That's why we travel in packs in my circle. We're all Leos except for the Sag who decided to, to chum around because only a Sag can really do that in a group of Leos, right? But <laughs> the 10th house is Cancer. Cancers, right away I'm drawn to the father energy. Even though Cancer in the 10th house is more of a feminine energy, but during this eclipse, and keep in mind, Cancer, Libra, Capricorn and Aries, you guys are all being affected most by this eclipse. New moon, solar eclipse, you guys are all being affected. So for cancer people, there will be information about the father figure coming up during this eclipse. So between now and six months after, April 8th and six months down the road. So Gemini, you're in the 11th house. Gemini, you are gonna have some fun with your friends, focus on what you wanna do, all of that. That's, you're gonna have some fun. It is reverse racism. Why do you think you get to comment on my skin color since your skin color can't be changed? Whoever you are, whatever color, I don't care if you're purple. If you can't change your skin color, why are you commenting on mine? You don't like it, don't do it. What the hell's wrong with you? You don't like it. I can't change, I can't help my mother was white and whoever my dad was that I just found out. I can't help that shit. I can't help it and neither can you. You can't help your height. You can't help your color. You can't help your eye color. You can't help this shit. So like deal with me, I'm white, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Anyway, the 11th house of Gemini. Time to put your energy into the type of friends you wanna have, okay? Taurus is last because of the way the wheel goes during the eclipse. Um, anyway, Gemini, friends, dreams, and goals. Your focus is on the 11th house issues, which is the natural house of Aquarius. So inspired insight, information, all of that. And then we have Taurus in the 12th. Past life spiritual connections for Taurus during the eclipse. And keep in mind, Aries and Taurus get along really, really well. Like Aries and Taurus get along super well. So it's a good energy because Taurus can stay kind of stuck. And Aries is like, get out, get out, go. And the 12th house is all kinds of... All kinds of, um, how do I want to word it? All kinds of, 12th house is all kinds of past life spiritual stuff, okay? So it has a lot to do with that. In your personal charts, you have to look and see where Aries is placed in your personal chart. Take a look at the Cancer house, take a look at the Capricorn house, and take a look at the, sorry, take a look at the Libra house, take a look at the Cancer house and the Capricorn house in your chart. So like if you have your Aries in the eighth house, that's vastly different than the fifth house. But I'm reading it generally for the sun signs, but you have to look on your chart and look for things that are 19 degrees. Also, not that I'm not gonna mention this, for you people that like to buy lottery tickets, the 20th and the 21st is really good. We have Uranus, Uranus Jupiter conjunction on April 20th. That's unexpected luck. Like that's like shit raining, raining luck, okay? So whatever it is you're trying to do, let's say you're trying to pitch an idea, let's say you're trying to do whatever it is, I don't know, pitch an idea, get a permit to build something onto your house, an ADU, I don't know, get a new car, do it on the 20th. Ask for it, 
put the information out there because it's so lucky. Uranus and Jupiter is like super lucky. Jupiter is the planet that rules Sagittarius and it's, it's just like expansive, right? So Jupiter is just like out there, crazy expansive. Uranus is like a wildcat card, right? It just comes up and says, yeah, let's shift some luck over here. So it's really, really lucky. So don't let anybody squash your luck on the 20th of April because that's when that conjunction happens. And actually, probably leading up to the conjunction, so like the 20th, conjunction means the planets are married. So their energies combine, they're married like this, okay? So it's a combination of energy like this. So you want to combine the energy, right? And so we have the 20th and the 21st. It's absolutely good luck. I don't care what you're doing. Even if you get arrested, you will get off on the charge. <laughs> you will get off on the charge. So it's super lucky. Okay, so we have Mercury retrograde until the 25th of April. There will be a shadow period because understand when Mercury goes direct again, it goes to its station degree, the degree that it went retrograde in. So it goes right back to that point and then it starts moving distance and moving forward. So it's probably like a two-week thing. But, you know, you can't be worrying about the shadow periods on everything because there's shat. Don't listen to eclipse weirdos, okay? Please don't listen to eclipse weirdos. <laughs> don't do that. There's all these people that go, everything's going to stop. Okay. Has anything ever really stopped? Like the whole time you've been alive, has anything ever stopped? Because it's never stopped for me. Like shit doesn't stop. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, has anything ever stopped? Like, does anything ever stop? Just because of the eclipse, they're going to stop stuff. Oh, Aries rising is definitely going to affect you. Definitely going to affect you. I Oh, you have a natural wheel. So it's going to affect you. And I think it's going to be super fun. So I like eclipses. They can be difficult to navigate, like if you are, I, I, I don't know what, but if you're not paying attention, there are erratic things that can, that can happen. Like I remember Anna Nicole Smith when Uranus went direct, and same with Jimmy, when um, my stepson passed, both of them had Uranus, not, not the same Uranus, but I think they were born the same year. Both of them were, they both be the same age, 67. And they're both Sagittarius, So maybe they did have that. When that Uranus went direct, but it's a different years. When it went direct in her chart and in my stepson's chart, it went like this. And once it went direct and the energy flipped erratically, that's when they both left. And Anna Nicole Smith left during an eclipse. So it can be that if you're like doing goofy shit or whatever it is, like it can, and it can also be your time. So it can, you know, it can be that time. I'm just telling you the straight up astrologies. I have shut my text questions down. Hear me clearly. Oh no. Wait, sorry. Somebody just said something to me. I, I, I'm sorry, I just got a text that someone passed, eclipse things. Oh, okay, that's my cousin. Okay, anyway, sorry, I'm just like, I'm like, oh no. And then I was like, didn't she already pass? And I'm like, no, that was her little sister anyway. Okay, uh, I'm sorry that I will have to phone after this. Um, okay, hey, white lady. <laughs> that's right, I'm a fucking whitey, full on whitey over here. I don't hate any race, you know that, I mean, I don't know what to say. I do and have always dated older white men. That's what I do. That's like my weird peccadillo is I think I had a, I have this on here. I think I had a near uh, or a past life where I was born in the forties. And then I tried to get back to the same people, but I came in in the sixties. So they were already 20 and I was behind them <laughs> because everybody I date is pretty much 20 years older. So it's a thing. They are all white, but I have dated outside of my race. I just haven't married them. Sorry. I mean, you know, sorry for having a preference on an energy level of who I want to fuck. I mean, you know, <laughs> I don't know what to say. Yeah, black by injection. Exactly. I don't know what to say. <laughs> I don't know what to say. If I fell in love with someone of a different color or different heritage or different ethnicity, I would have done that. But I fell in love with John, so I married him and had my two white children. 
Should I be ashamed of this? You shouldn't be ashamed of what you are. And I'm definitely not listening to people who use that race card because there's something seriously fucking wrong with people. They always pull it out. You notice they pull it out in politics, this and that and the other. It's like, dude, get a life. Like you can tell when people are, you can tell when people do stupid shit and think like that. This is not how I am. But um, anyway, it doesn't even matter. I don't even care. Think what you want. Go about and think what you want. Do your reverse. <laughs> Do your re reversed racism. Do your reverse racist bullshit and white privilege garbage. Okay. Now, if you want to look at that, it's interesting. It's Aries. It's Aries. And we will go back down Aries solar eclipse. And by December, we're going to have Pluto creep back one last time into traditional Capricorn. Very interesting. Because it's in Aquarius and people are crazy, but it will creep back. When it creeps back, all of that nonsense again will come up where people, <laughs> where people will, you know, skin color changes every, your gender changes every lifetime in your skin. Like you can be male, female, women, you can have 10 lifetimes as somebody who's Italian and then switch over to black and then come back as Hispanic and be whitey for another 10 years. You can do that. Or you can flip right out of it. You can be man, 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 and then girl. You can do all kinds of things. Why does it matter? Like, are people that, like, unaware spiritually that you flip in and out of skins in different lifetimes? What do I care what my Keith comes back as when I come back with him, which I don't want to come to this planet, but wherever we go? What do I care what his skin color is? It's going to be Keithy. So I'm going to love my Jason and love my Keith, period. And I'm going to go and be where they go. Like, what's that about? Anyway, we go back when Ca when um, Pluto goes back into Capricorn. That's when we're going to have so much things that happen in the election. Yes, I definitely. We, well, we know I was molested as a child. So, of course, when you say daddy issues, it's really interesting. People use the word daddy issues like it's a patriarchal thing. Why don't they look at the man and say you have daughter issues? Why don't they do that? I'm just fucking curious. Or you have mommy issues. They don't do that as much. I think it's just a thing. I mean, when you're sexually abused as a child, you do a lot of things that are trauma responses and behaviors that other people don't understand. And they always blame you for it. But really, they should go back and smack the shit out of their parents. Like if you were sexually abused as a child, go back to the people who fucking did it and slap the crap out of them. Because I was a child. I'm not taking responsibility for that. I'm not. And I married who I married. And we beat a lot of people. We had 36 years. And I had two beautiful children. But like, don't pick on me and go, you got a fucked up daddy issue. I was married. I did everything by the book. I did everything good. It's like, why is that my problem? I raised my kids. I was respectful. I stayed. That's what I did. That's what I, I know. I love this microphone. I got it. Hello. <laughs> you know what I want to do? Put it, put it on the speaker in the car. And <laughs> no, well, you, I've gotten therapy. I'm comfortable with who I am. I've taken responsibility for everything. Just because you marry somebody and you have a childhood trauma does not mean you divorce them. You don't divorce them because you figured out why you did what you did. Why would you do that? You made a commitment. You know, why would you do that? Why would you do it? I draw the line when people have addiction issues that impede on my happiness. That's where I draw the line. So that's it. What can I tell you? I mean, it's not the kid's fault. Every time you look at a sex worker and you look at a guy on the street, there's more guys in Hollywood on the street because we know they don't really like women out here. More men fucking abuse male children than they do female. And I'm convinced of it from the way that I grew up, from all of my friends that were sexually abused, that were men, little boys, okay? In my family, out of my family, my friends, people in foster homes. I was in like 14 different foster homes, people in wherever. Oh, that's what I was going to talk about. Um, but... It's really the adult's fault. Like, stop fucking children. So, like, when you're focused all on this bullshit in society on the news, you should be looking at P. Diddy, Jay-Z, Ashton Kutcher, and all of these people and ask them why they think it's okay to enslave people sexually, male or female, like they're sex workers. Why is that okay? And why is it okay when they're underaged? Why is that okay? Why is it okay for Usher's mother to give Usher to P. Diddy as under the age of 15, 12, 13, 14, or 15, whatever he is? Why is that okay? 
why are people coming after me? Why don't you ask those people? Because clearly it's an atrocity against the most enslaved group of people, which is children. We have sweat lodges. We have sex workers. I told you, I worked at Children of the Night. I worked at Children of the Night with kids that were under the age of 18, from 12 to 18, through two pregnancies. I volunteered and then got a job there, okay? So I gave my time to those kids that were street kids in a transient type shelter. They'd take them in as long as they followed the rules and then they, they could, it wasn't a long-term stay. There was a little girl there that was 12, okay? She was a dark-skinned girl, 12. She was out on the streets. Her family tricked her out and there were grown-ass men paying for her. She would come into the shelter at night, suck her thumb, and she wet her bed. Why don't our communities, regardless of our skin color, go after, okay, go after those people in our families and clear out our races from the pedophiles? That's what I'm asking. Why don't we do that? But no, we look at each other because the government concocted some kind of conspiracy against colors. This color, that color, this religion, the government did it. It's not about that. It is about the abuse of children, period. You're an adult. You can do whatever you want, but children can't. So please, thank you all for the live, uh, the, um, oh my God, the super chats. I'm trying to think of it, but why don't we help children? Why you come after people that talk about it? All I did was say what P. Diddy did and his wife's energy is saying that he took her off the planet. Why is murder okay? Why are you looking at me like I'm the problem? Why don't you all look at P. Diddy like he's the problem? Why don't you stop saying the government's feeding anybody anything except the bullshit where they make us fight each other for bullshit reasons? I mean, if you have two brain cells in your head, you know you can't help the color you were born. And you know that the color you born doesn't have anything to do with your ability to read, write, and articulate, okay? It also has nothing to do with whether you can be a, wait a waitress, an airplane pilot, a fucking dentist, okay? Has nothing to do with that. So if you're stupid and you block people because of whatever their skin color is, because you think they can't do their job, then you're the fucking idiot. There's plenty of educated people of all colors, all races, all economic levels in all businesses. The government tells you there's a problem with that because it's run by a bunch of old fucking white men. Where are the people of color? Even the people of color in our government, Obama, he is still of color, two colors, and they still attack them for that. Do you see what I'm saying? It doesn't matter who goes up there. They're going to attack you. They're going to say you're not this. And then we have people saying that they're Native American. Who was that politician that said she was part Native American? And, and she wasn't. The lady with the short, dark hair. I can't even think of her fucking name. She's like, I'm part Native American and she's a real tall woman and I can't think of her name. What a fucking idiot. Now you're just mocking people. So when you see stuff online that's racist of any kind, I don't care who they're being racist against, block them, delete them. Elizabeth Warren, what a mental patient. Stop mocking. <laughs> Stop. And, and, and out of curiosity, again, I'm going to bring this up again. I watched a thing out of Arizona about um, missing Native kids, okay? They go missing, and it takes them years to find these kids. And they were asking one of the police officers on the red reservation, why? Okay, look what happened. So society came in and the natives wanted their own life. I want my own life. I want the way I want to live. I don't want the government telling me how to live, okay? Like seriously, they're putting bus lanes everywhere. I don't want to take a bus. I want to drive 200 miles a day if I fucking want to. I want to travel around. I want to walk. I don't want to ride a bike in Los Angeles. I don't care. I don't, the government is, is completely trying to tell you how to live. They did it with the native community. The native community, okay, was pushed onto the reservations. It's fine. It's their land. But then they take the money away from them and tell them you can make money by gambling, which then lowers the vibration and causes so many problems. Do you see what they did with the deal? And it's just so wrong. They do it to societies, people in Haiti, 
people in third world countries. They trap the entire, now my eye, I ran out of vitamin B12. Anyway, they, they take the entire region, the entire country, and they bind it so that people can't get out of it. It's a problem. And it's the government's, same in Australia, in Canada, exactly. It's a problem. And then you have people like the royal family who ruled over Canada, okay? That's why I'm saying that. I grew up in Canada. Then you have that. And by the way, I didn't say that white-ass queen was my fucking ruler when I had to say, God save the queen. I sat down in grade school and got expelled because I didn't like the energy of that woman. So I was kicked out of school and my parents were like, what the fuck is wrong with this child? So I didn't like her and she's whitey, okay? I don't like them because they lie to the public. Do you see what I'm saying? All of the government is lying, the entire government. It doesn't matter what you get in government, they are not telling you the truth. They are putting you into Agenda 2030, David Icke, which they've taken completely off the internet. They have done that. And they have put you into a position where they're going to have 15-minute cities, this, that, and the other. And that is what they have done. It's a huge problem. It's a huge problem. And people are voting for these people. Vote every single one of them out. And put, I like the women in Chicago that stand up against whoever they're yelling at there. That they're not going to vote Democratic. They're going to vote Republican. But here's the problem. The Republicans and the Democrats are all crooked. So we need all of them out like a Boston Tea Party thing. And then new people coming in that cannot make more than $200,000 a year and cannot do investments like Pelosi does behind the public's back. They laugh at us while we're working nine to fives. People making 40,000, 50,000, and you've got Biden adding more IRS people to come after your $50,000 a year. Are you kidding me? Fuck that guy too. Why are they doing, who are they? Don't let them rule your world. The Native American people, the Native Canadian people, the Aboriginals in Australia, they all bought into the lie because they chose to believe it from an honest point of integrity within themselves. And they got fucked over. Do not believe the government. The government lies, period. The government lies. It's They're lying to you now. They're taking out a car lane in Santa Monica. If you are in Los Angeles and you drive through Santa Monica and down Wilshire, you're going to slap yourself in the head. What that is, is them saying there's too many people, okay? And believe me, they don't like you regardless of what you look like or if you're male or female, they hate you. But they're saying there's too many people and they're going to put bus lanes in and bike lanes in. So that's going to force you and I who drive through Santa Monica or on Wilshire, God forbid, if you have to go to court downtown or something. So they're going to literally, literally force you out of your car, force you out of your car because they say they don't want you driving. I say, fuck you. I'm going to go everywhere I want to go anywhere and everywhere because I was not born to appease a bunch of people trying to own my ass like a bunch of cattle. I'm going to be the cow that escapes even if I get shot. That's who I'm going to be. You know, in the field, there's always herding dogs and there's always one car, cow that's rickshaw. That's who I'm going to be, the rickshaw one. The dogs can come after me and bite at my heels, but I'm going to run like a bitch through the field and get through that fence and fuck you all and I'm going to hide. And that's what I'm going to do. Um, <laughs> thank you for that, you guys. That's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to be that cow because they've enslaved us. We are cattle. We are herded on this planet. And if anybody doesn't think so, and you're right, they do not say a damn thing about the Native Americans, not Native Canadians. They don't care about them. So if you care about your, I guess it is ethnic foundation, so your history and lineage, and you want power for your people, like Sinead O'Connor, some of her stuff that she sang about, about the Irish people, the same thing. They just happen to be white. So if you care about your Irish people, your black people, your Native people, your England English people, your Asian people, whatever it is you care about, you cannot allow the systematic brutality through racism against other people. You cannot. You have to stop it all. Whether you like that group. I have a friend who's not racist against anybody but one particular group of people and you don't even think it's like you won't even guess the group it is. But she's racist against that group. So she's a hypocrite. You cannot allow that. 
But you can't allow it in any group, not native, not not African American, not not African from Africa, not Nigerian, not middle uh mid eastern i'm trying to think of middle eastern <laughs> i'm like all over the place not british not scottish not irish not canadian whatever you can't not armenian i talked to this lovely armenian woman and, and she was telling me stuff and i'm like i like your people i mean I, I don't know what people i i just like people if you're nice i like you if you're a fucking asshole i don't like you and i don't care what you look like oh my god anyway um but that's what we have to do that's what we have to do. Yeah, they want, no, they want you to own a bike. If you're in Los Angeles when it's 120 degrees, are you really going <laughs> to, Polynesian people, exactly. Are you really going to drive through Santa Monica on your bike with your hairspray or your fucking weave on or your booty shorts on? I mean, come on. What the hell? No, no, you're not. Okay. You are not. <laughs> this is so weird. I can't stand it. Um, It's just so weird. So we actually have to fight it. This eclipse is leading up to the election because we have we have April till October. The election's in November. So this eclipse, I really feel like people have to pay attention to the energy because it really is going to count. You know what I'm saying? Because the eclipse, I mean, the election happens one month after the eclipse. So it's extremely important that people pay attention. Yeah, see, everybody, they're, they're they, well, you know what I'm saying? Like, hey, Everybody's wearing hair extensions. Everybody's wearing all kinds of shit in their hair. I don't because I'm lazy and I don't want to grow it out. But like, I don't have anything in my hair. But um, no, I'm saying I have hairspray in my hair. So you think I'm going to go riding in 120 degrees through the dirty streets of Los Angeles with the homeless people who shit on the streets and pull their dicks out. And I'm going to ride my bike through that. Is that what I'm going to do? Or the guy shooting up on the street? Do you know how many times I drive by people who are going to the bathroom on the street or putting a needle in their body on the street. Now, why is that allowed? Why are people focused on psychics when you could be focused on the governor of California and the governor of New York that's allowing people to shoot up in the streets? Why aren't you going after them? Can you go after those people? Maybe you should go after those people. Those are the people that you need to go after. People are shooting up on the streets and shitting on our streets. You need to go after that. Stop picking on psychics. We're a very maligned group of people. Stop calling us astrologists. We're astrologers. Also a maligned group of people, okay? Stop with picking on old women. Also a maligned group of fucking people. <laughs> Stop, okay? Stop. Go after the guy that wants your kid on fentanyl ODing because they think there's too many people in the world and these politicians think that they have a right to control you. I don't think there'll be darkness for three days. I don't believe that, but that's me. I could be delusional. Um, <clears throat> yeah, Agenda 2030, David Icke. Are you the feds? Do you think I'm the feds? Do I look like the fucking feds to you? Cat ladies, I know, right? Cat lady, that's what I told Tallulah. I go, you're a cat, I'm a lady. Cat lady, cat lady, cat lady. She was looking at me like, you a crazy bitch. Um, they are importing fentanyl into this country deliberately. You Kids are gonna die left or right. Your kids, when they get to high school, are gonna be, they didn't take one thing. And it's not like like when I was a kid and I was puking because I drank something or I ended up in the emergency room because I took a diet pill because that did happen. It's not going to be like that. Or I was high as a kite for two weeks because I took like LSD every day for a week and then I couldn't find my pants. That's not going to happen. I still lived. You know what I'm saying? Could be a little bit crazy, but I still lived. What's going to happen is your little, your sweet little eighth grader is going to go to school and somebody's going to hand them a Valium or a Xanax or whatever it is, or smoke weed laced with fentanyl. Fentanyl, y'all. So, and, and they're letting it in this country. So the government, now just let me understand this for a while. I'm just going to understand this. So Instagram puts a thing on my page. When you go to follow me on Instagram and it says, don't, are you sure you want to follow this page? They don't, I'm sorry about your son. They kill him. They, they just, 
I just can't. I just, I, I, you should be after your legislators with this open border because they are trying to kill everybody with fentanyl. You should get, you, Biden, shut the fucking border. Shut the fucking border, okay? They're not even coming from Mexico. Stop blaming the Mexicans. These are people from God knows where. They're not even, they're driving them to Mexico or flying them into Mexico. Oh, I know what they're doing. Divide and conquer. Exactly. But you have to know there's just terrible, terrible fentanyl. Shut the border. You have to shut the border. I'm sorry. Do you let people in your house? Can we go sit on the, on the White House front lawn or is there a fucking gate around it? But that clown that spends my money and your money because y'all are taxpayers, that jackass opens the gate around this country and then tells you, tells you you can't do what you want to do. I, I know it's a depopulation. Look up Agenda 2030, David Icke, and start seeing what they're doing. Fight against the government. They're getting rid of restaurants that have just bars so that you can't hang out with like-minded people, i.e. people that have guns. Now, let's go talk about guns now. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Okay, so when they say there should be no guns, guns kill people, fentanyl kills people, pharmaceuticals kill people, psych meds kill people, cars kill people, okay? Cars kill people, alcohol kills people, Botox kills people, breast implants kills people, all right? Sperm kills people, strep throats kills people. All right, so let's go, let's go, <laughs> let's go to guns. So let me get this right. You can't stop anything. You can't stop child traffickers. You can't stop uh, fentanyl from coming into this country. You can't stop people from drinking and driving. But diarrhea kills. There you go. Good, good point. So you can't stop anything. But if I give you my gun back, you take my fucking gun. Um, the police have guns, which means they can control you. I don't want anybody in government having anything over me, okay? Nothing. No, I don't work for the government. I'm not CIA. I'm a child fucking stripper who left home at 14. That's all I am. And I happen to be an astrologer and a psychic, and these are the only things I am, and a mother of two. So don't talk stupid. Do I know people? I know people in all walks of life. I know people in all walks of life, but here's what I can tell you. I do not trust a government that says give up your guns with a bunch of bullshit because they cause the people who do the school shootings and stuff in order to, they cause those people psychologically through psych meds to go out. They program them. Uh, Ted, oh my God, they're putting a frequency in here. I'm not going to shut up. Ted Kaczynski was one of them. Okay. So Ted Gazinski, whatever, the Unabomber, he was programmed. It has to do with the military. It has to do with all of that. That's what it has to do. Yeah, Canada fucking socialists, okay? Canada, every kid I grew up with had a gun in Canada. My family had guns, okay? Like everybody had a gun. Nobody's giving their guns up. Don't be stupid. And here's how you know that. Democrat share... Democrat Barbara Streisand, and yeah, I'm going to use the word Democrat with this. These two bitches that travel with security teams that have guns want you to give up your guns. So they have bodyguards and they wah wah about you having the right to have a gun. I'm not talking about criminals. I'm talking about people. So you have the right to have a gun. But these people with their bodyguards, two or three of them, having guns, that if you say hi, they'll fucking take you to the ground. <laughs> but Babs and Cher, I'm like, here's Cher. I'm leaving the, the country if Trump gets in. Don't let the door hit you on the way out, bitch. No one cares if you're leaving the country. See how celebrity was propagandized in order to manipulate the public? Because back in the 60s, people would have done what Cher did. But no one's listening to her now. She doesn't have any control. But you see, you know that Hollywood was created by the CIA and the government and all those movies. There's like thousands of them that have to get approval from the government because it's programming. It's programming. You are programmed. I'm not giving up my guns. Sorry. <laughs> I'm not doing it. Not going to do it. Not doing it. We're not doing it in our house. Not doing it. Pack and carry. Pack and carry. Get out of my face and pack and carry. <laughs>
I've lost my mind. But um, <laughs> pack and carry. But these people have bodyguards. So what? You're a peasant. You can't protect yourself. You're not allowed to protect yourself. Is that correct? You're not allowed to protect yourself. Yeah, we're all packing in our neighborhood. We all pack. None of us are going to sit back and not have something to protect ourselves. You come near me, I'm going to fuck with you. I have a right to that. Don't come near me. Don't fuck with me. Like I said, like I said, the Rothschilds are garbage. It's pretty funny because they'll be held in a suspension pattern for all the shit they did to uproot this planet. Really, really funny. Really funny. Yeah, exactly. You need to in California. You need to everywhere. I had a gun in Canada. You need to have a gun everywhere. You can't trust anybody. Yeah, I know my allergies. Not getting rid of my kitty though. Um, you can't be against guns. They have guns. They just put one in your head and tell you to do what they want you to do. I'm talking about the police. If you've ever been SWAT teamed, which our house was SWAT teamed on a regular basis, and we were all put in handcuffs. I've told you those stories. They just shoot you. They will fucking shoot you. They are trained to shoot and kill, not shoot and maim. They are trained to shoot and kill. So if you go against them and they say stop, if they say stop and you continue to walk, they're trained to shoot and kill you. They can do that. Yeah, Tallulah senses energy. That's what happened. Thank you for that, you all. Uh, I'm sure. Prince William is, I'm sure. They go make, that, that's what I'm saying. They all lie. Why do we, I, this is my last thought. And then I have to run to class because I have to be there. And in Los Angeles, it's going to take me an hour to drive the 12 miles on a Friday evening. <sighs> on Good Friday. It should only take me 20 minutes, but I will be an extra 40 in the car. So that's what's going to happen. Unfortunately for me, just saying. Okay. So anyway, um, wait, hold on. I want to see what you're saying. This is what I, thank you for reminding me. It's saying you're a fed. Yeah, I'm okay. If you want to think I'm a fed, then I mean, I, I don't know what to say to you. I don't know what to say to you. I don't think you can do that if you have like an arrest record, but all right. I mean, whatever. Um, yeah, that's kind of weird. I don't know what to say. Like, you're going to believe what you believe and I don't know what to say. What that is, is them getting mad that I'm making money because I got something right. That's what it's mad. They're mad. They're mad. Because they didn't do it. They didn't think of it. They didn't invent it. So yeah, they're going to come after you. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know what to say. I would say ignore them. I mean, if you want to think that, go ahead and think it. It's fine. I mean, if that's what you really want to think, I don't know what to say. A fed, that's the funniest fucking thing. <laughs> I'm, I'm assuming it's because I'm white and have short hair. And look somewhat like an old lesbian. You want to say that, right? No offense to old lesbians. But that's what you want to say. And I'm a cat lady. She's like... She's a fucking fed. Shut up, you idiots. Um, anyway, this I did talk about the eclipses. Here's what I want to say on TikTok. Do, I'm saying this on all platforms. Do not, do not give these people money. I stopped st stripping when I married John. So I was, well, 23 turning 24. I started at 14. So I spent a good nine years, almost 10 years in the industry doing that. And I was always reading in the background. People, fucking people have known me for years. I've known me for years, know what I am. People are stupid. <laughs> She's fed up. Exactly. Maybe Kanye's a fed. You know, I mean, I don't know what to say. I mean, like, shut the fuck up. But don't give your money. If they're using my name, I have, listen to me. When I do do readings and open my books, when I do that, I only allow people to pay me for readings, for text questions, for email um, uh, email readings, whatever it is, the e email that's already pre-done kind of thing. That comes from sloanbella.com. Any other version of my name is not my fucking name. Underscore two A's. It's S-L-O-A-N-B-E-L-L-A dot com. I've had my website for 30 fucking years, okay? 
That's it. If you want to think I'm a fed, then go ahead. I don't give a shit. We always get pulled over by the police, but all right. You know, we have to get our family. Get out of the car. Do you have any guns in the car? Our last name is flagged all over the place. But if you want to think I'm a fed, go for it. Um, I'm sure somebody has a private eye out there. Go do it. Ask them to provide evidence I'm a fed. Do that. Because there has to be a list somewhere <laughs> of FBI agents. And they have to go to school. I left school. At, I mean, I didn't get out of ninth grade. So I think they kind of have to have an education. But like, if you believe that, that's cool. Um, don't, I mean, thank you, I guess. That's cool. Uh, now I can scare the next generation of kids by saying I'm a fed. I'm the fed. FBI. Um, I don't know what to say. I think people are really fucking stupid. <laughs> oh my God. My friends are dying laughing. Dying laughing fucking dying laughing. Okay. Dying. Anything in authority I repel from. You are not my fucking authority. I don't believe in government agencies. I don't take welfare. I don't take government supplements. I don't take that shit. I don't believe in it. Okay. You got it. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I don't know how to say it anymore, but you understand I got something right as a psychic and they would rather make up shit about a psychic that picked up on information, not being fed, just picked up on the information, just doing the bullshit she does on her channel, they would rather attack that than deal with the pedophile called P. Diddy who just got busted. And all of the people in, in his fucking life that he killed, didn't kill, enslaved, beat up, they would rather target me than do that. Why are they not looking at the child pedophile? I'm just fucking asking. Can't they flip it? Like, let's focus on that. I don't know. Or is it because like I'm nobody and they think they're going to get me because I'm nobody? Like she's not important. Let's fuck with her. <laughs> fuck off. Um. Anyway. Yeah, I don't know what to say. I mean, I don't know what to say. Yeah, the woman writing that is the predator. She's lying. She's abusive. She's bullying. Um. I don't know what to say. Like if you're that kind of person, I don't know what to say. She's abusive. She's a bad person. Very low vibration. But if you think that's what I am, I can't talk you out of it. I don't give a shit. I'll keep doing my readings. I'll keep playing with my kid and grandkids. I'll go visit my friends. I'll eat salmon. I'll go to aerial class. I'll go to pole class. I'll be the old hoe I am. And that's what I'll do. I mean, I don't know what to say. <laughs> I don't want to fucking say. Anyway, um, don't give these people any money because they're actually trying to get money. They're asking people for money. They're threatening to kill them. They're saying they want $80 readings. I will only ever do readings from my website. If my calendar's closed, it's not because I'm booked out. It's because I shut it down. I do not want more readings right now. I can only do what I do. I have a life. So I do my videos. I do these. And then I go about my business. So you can check back when I'm caught up with everybody. And that's what I will do. I'm not on strike. I just don't want to work that hard. You know, I, I will do what I do when I do it, when I choose to do it. It's going to be on my choice, not because there's a demand for me and I'm going to ride that wave to get money. I don't care. My time is more valuable. So I will do what I do when I choose to do it and have the energy to do it. Otherwise, I'm not doing it. I don't care. Y'all want readings? You can find other psychics. You don't need me. <laughs> you don't need me, honestly. You can do whatever you want. There's a, Go to the lady that's calling me a fed and ask her who she recommends as a psychic. Go get a reading from them. <laughs> Please. I don't know what to say. Um, yeah, I don't know what to say. Just have at it. I documented everything. I think I did a video with um, Biggie Smalls three, four years ago where I said Diddy would go down. That's just what I picked up. Nobody was feeding me that. I just picked it up. I just happened to pick it up when they, when you guys, my regular followers on here, asked me to do Kim Porter. I just happened to pick it up. That's all. Anyway, blah, blah, blah. No one gives a shit. Remember, in your life, no one cares. So I just have the platform where I can say what I want to say. I feel really sorry for people that have bullies in their life that say shit to their families that are narcissistic, passive-aggressive, 
horrible human beings that just split everybody apart in a family and do that shit to people they're jealous of. Oh my God, can you imagine that? You got this bitch over there in your family and because she's like, uh, you know, fake with a bunch of shit in her face and, you know, filters on and different eye colors and fucking whatever. She's sitting there screwing up the new girlfriend that comes in with her brother or whatever because she's cute. We got to fuck her over. Fuck her over. Yeah. Oh my God. That's like a narcissist. I just think it's really bad. <laughs> Can you imagine it? Can you imagine it? I mean, what the hell is that? What is that? No, I'm serious. It's a narcissistic behavior. All of you that have narcissistic people in your family, can you imagine living with somebody when you get a promotion at your job, they start crying at Thanksgiving dinner because they feel entitled to what you do and they put you down and say you don't deserve that promotion because you're garbage at the dinner table. Like just look at it back that way. This is what's going on on here. It's like ridiculous. <laughs> it's ridiculous okay happy easter sunday in the name of jesus amen in the name of jesus celebrate the baby jesus even though i don't think it's the right day just saying but anyway well jesus the man not the baby but the man anyway in the name of jesus amen i am christian and i will be celebrating with my family this holiday at the dinner table with them because i love them and so I will choose to see it as a Christian holiday, which that is how I will choose to see it. And that's what I will do. And he came back and he was resurrected and that's, that's it. Resurrection, reincarnated. I don't think he came back here though. I think he was smarter than that. That's what I think. But I will spend my Easter dinner with my beautiful family and that's what I will do. And I hope you all do the same. I hope you all do the same. Bye, you guys. Thank you so much for everything. Thank you, guys. Bye.